Hey everyone, Robin from Backscatter here. Hi, I'm Rusty. And we're here today to talk to you about a little promo that we're running from Backscatter uh, for a couple of really cool underwater scooter packages. We've got the Pegasus Thruster DPV and the Piranha P1 from Divex, both of which are coming in an everything you need package, including a travel ready case for over $1,000 off the Pegasus and over $1,500 off the Piranha from Divex. But the real reason that Russ and I are sitting here in the studio to talk to you is to explain why we as underwater photographers and cinematographers consider these pretty much essential pieces of gear when getting the shot really matters underwater. Uh, we also want to talk to you about why we're not afraid to travel with these sometimes intimidating pieces of equipment uh, and why you really shouldn't be afraid of traveling with them either. So Russ, you've been diving with scooters longer than anybody else here on Team Backscatter. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, the deal with the uh, Piranha P1 here? What's what's it all about and why do you love it? Yeah, the Divex Piranha is a tow behind scooter. Okay. So we're clipping this into a D-ring on our crotch strap mm -hmm. or anything on your waist strap. And it's mm -hmm. basically pulling us through the water. Mm -hmm. So we're not having to physically hold on to handles which can be tiring if you've ever used some of those other scooters where you're having to hold on the whole dive. This is just pulling us along. Using kind of and, a mountain bike style grip. Yeah, I've got a little grip that you're very lightly holding and just by applying pressure in different directions, you can very easily steer. Awesome, Yeah. awesome, all right. And so how does a camera incorporate into this? This is our camera mount? Yeah, this is just a cummerbund strap camera mount that okay. slides over this. And then we've got another section that attaches to our SLR point and shooter mirrorless camera mm -hmm. housing and we're good to go. Nice, that's yeah. awesome. So what are some of the things that really make the Piranha as an individual model super cool and easy for travel? Well, this new model has four DeWalt 20 volt lithium ion batteries that awesome. are removable okay. and they have the same battery like a cordless drill would use. Yeah. So they very quickly come out you put those in our carry on bag. This all fits in a very small roller bag that becomes a check bag. Okay. This system complete as it's sitting right now is 24 pounds. So it's very lightweight. So as a check bag goes, you're you're gonna be, yeah, you might be paying for a third bag, but it's not an overweight third bag, exactly. which is nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And cool. This is a modular system. You can add multiple sections to add more batteries if you needed, but okay. as it sets, it's a 120 minute run time. Awesome. So ridiculous range. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And what do we got going on in this middle section here? Looks like you got a little electronic readout and a vacuum system. Yeah. So this is Smart Slice. This is something that's new. It's a vacuum system with a digital readout and it also provides battery power level. So it tells us during the dive how much battery power we have left, which is a first, okay. which is great, super useful information. Awesome. And it's using the same fitting as our airlock vacuum system. So if you have an airlock on your housing, yeah. you can use the pump and gauge to plug in here and pull your vacuum. As we all know, you know, we're, we're taking electronics into saltwater environments and sometimes stuff goes a little weird. It's always nice to have that manual airlock gauge as a redundancy. For you know? sure. Yeah. How about speed on this thing? What are we looking at? Uh, so this is very unique. As far as I know, these guys were the first to have, uh, for, and it's an electronic speed control, lack of a better word, transmission. So you can shift during okay. the dive. So you can upshift and downshift. Mm -hmm. on the fly. Very cool. Without stopping. So, and you can also even, if you want to take it a step further, program those speeds. You can have it so it comes on in first gear, fifth gear, eighth gear, and you, you know, you can, it's totally, the user interface is very customizable. Very, very cool. Yeah. Nice. So over here, I've got the Pegasus Thruster DPV, and this is a little different because this is actually a tank mounted propulsion device. So this whole unit is going on the back of my tank using a little cummerbund strap here that's going around the tank itself. Uh, this whole nose section is basically one battery. So you got a nickel metal hydride battery, two of which come in the case. So you've always got one on charge or on standby and one ready to go underwater. Pretty cool streamlined little system here. Um, something that doesn't necessarily incorporate the same stability benefits that a uh, tow behind scooter with a you know, camera mounted directly on the scooter can have. But what I like about this one, especially when I'm shooting stills, is that I've got both hands free on my SLR and my little go trigger here in my hand on the grip. So I can be scouting, moving around, being able to shoot quickly and just run with it. So I really like this for kind of scouting the dive site, maybe getting a little space to myself. Um, and it's just a lot of fun because let's face it, at the end of the day, it's an underwater jetpack. Like, how's that not right. cool? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I really like that one. 
Uh, not quite the same runtime as you have with the Piranha, You're not getting 120 minutes out of this guy, but still gonna last you the majority of your dive. Yeah, a lot better than kicking. Absolutely, yeah. any day of the week. Yeah. Robin, so you were just mentioning stability, um, and that's really where this comes in, especially as for videography. Mm -hmm. Once we've got our mount on here and our housing's attached to this, this whole system's perfectly neutral. So when we add our housing, we now have this, we've added so much mass, we've doubled or tripled the size of our system. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to do really smooth moves, pans, any kind of movement when you're filming video. You know, it's gonna look like something that was potentially shot on set because nice. you've yeah. got just having that bigger footprint underwater makes a huge difference, especially if we're talking about like a point and shoot or mm -hmm. a mirrorless system that's small and so easy to introduce any kind of shake mm -hmm. that basically goes away with this. That's awesome. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things. We talk about that a lot is that, you know, stability really matters for video because let's face it, shaky cam stuff just isn't that fun to watch, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I've, I've even seen a benefit when just using the Pegasus, even if I've still got something handheld out in front of me and don't have that added mass, not having the hip roll from the fin kick and stuff like that, right. just being able to rely on consistent speed if I'm trying to keep up with something, when I'm just looking for that nice reef scape that looks like a flyover, you yeah. know? it's Man, it's really cool unlocking that kind of stability with these things. For sure, yeah. And kind of touching on that note too, that's really, one of my favorite things about using one of these, especially if not a lot of people are scootering on a dive boat, is that I get to kind of break away from the crowd. You know, it's like we jump in, kind of see where everybody goes. Maybe everyone kind of converges on that first site the dive master's recommended. I might just be inclined to kind of motor on the other, the way, other way, see if I can get a shot without a whole lot of bubbles in it and yeah. find something that's maybe a little less blown out and still got plenty of time and energy to regroup, you For know? sure, that's one of the, my favorite parts about having a scooter, is you can just go explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing I've really found that a huge benefit is with any kind of critter that's moving faster than we are underwater with just our fin kicks. Uh, just a couple months ago, we were at a backscatter trip down in Rotan, Honduras, where we had free swimming green moray eels, like you just wouldn't believe. I've never seen that many, it was awesome. But for a lot of people, you know, they're by the time they see it, react to it, you get a couple shots as it cruises by, and then it's, oh, have fun going down the reef. Okay, we'll see you later, you know? But if you got a scooter, it's like, hmm, okay, kick out from the wall a little bit, move around to intercept, hang out, let them come by again, a few more shots, and just kind of leapfrog down there as you're watching your, you know, time and air, you get triple, quadruple the shooting opportunities, unless, you know, <laughs> you gotta be able to keep up with it. Some totally game changer for yeah, that kind of stuff. Awesome. Yeah, it's awesome, yeah. So another great example of that is Matt Ferraro, our resident cinematographer. Mm -hmm. um, last year was shooting a documentary on orcas in Norway and was free diving and scuba diving with those guys and was using a piranha mm -hmm. and was able to get some amazing footage that yeah. you just wouldn't be able to without a scooter. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. that's when you think about, you know, applications for this gear and you think about living on a sailboat under, you know, 23 hours of darkness a day or whatever it is, chasing wild orca through the fjords of Norway, scootering along with them under the northern lights. Sign me up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So what really got you into using a scooter in the first place? Uh, the original reason was gas consumption. You know, it, it goes down considerably, mm -hmm. and I was doing tech dives with a lot of equipment on, mm -hmm. had a lot of drag in water. We were going really far offshore. Um, I borrowed a scooter from a shop, and it just was a total eye opener. You know, that's what really originally got me into it. But that benefits us as photographers, videographers as well. If you've got an aluminum 80 on your back, I don't know that it's doubling your your gas consumption, mm -hmm. but it is quite a bit of gas savings mm -hmm. using a scooter. Awesome, yeah. awesome. And so what kind of experiences have you had in the water where you really felt that benefit the most? Uh, the last time we did a truck lagoon trip, a backscatter trip there, mm -hmm. I elected to take my scooter instead of my rebreather. Okay. And it was the first time I'd done that on that trip and was able to see all of a wreck, like the San Francisco Maria, which is a 400 foot long ship, I could go to the stern, film the prop, go back midship, 
go back to the bow, film the bow gun, go back to the stern, mm -hmm. move around as those areas opened up and there wasn't other photographers there. Mm -hmm. I was able to do that on on all the wrecks there and when we'd come up from a dive, I'd talk to the rest of the divers and most of them only were able to see maybe the bow gun and yeah. part of the other ship. That's huge, yeah. that's huge. Yeah. And so, I mean, you're taking this stuff all the way to Truck Lagoon, no matter what scooter you're traveling with, what are some of the logistics that go into getting it there? What's I mean, is it really that easy to get one of these things halfway around the world or what do people need to know? For sure, and now with this, now it's even smaller than what I was previously traveling with. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the batteries go in our carry-on and they're very, very small. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've got a lightweight you know, check bag. You could put your wetsuit and other equipment in that same bag as well. Mm -hmm might be able to get it in two check bags, all of your equipment, but Man. it's very easy to travel with now. So all worst, of this Worst stuff case is, scenario, you're paying for a third bag? Yeah, which yeah. is so worth it once you use one of these. You, you want to take it everywhere. I know that's how I felt about the Pegasus. I mean, this thing comes in its own very cool, you know, Pelican case with custom cut foam that everything just kind of right down into. It's yeah. pretty awesome just for that, you know? Um, but I mean, they're nickel metal hydride batteries, so there's no concern about putting them underneath the plane. So basically everything goes in your, uh, you know, hard shelled, super protective case and check it and you're good to go. You don't even need to bring any of this on the plane. So um, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no, no special packing, no paperwork. It's like, if you want to use this on your dive, okay, it's just like packing your reg and your BC. Yeah. So Robin, we've been talking about using these as a photo video tool, but there's times where we're on a trip, whether it's a digital shootout or one of our other trips, where I just elect to not take a camera mm -hmm. and go be Dolphin Boy. I mean, <laughs> you, can, you know, it's, it's just so free to be able to move around. You can do barrel rolls mm -hmm. and all kinds of just, and just explore, go yeah. cruise around. It's so much fun. So it's not like this is just a tool for video or photo. They're just fun to have to use. I think, and you know, if you are bringing a camera down, even if you didn't get the shot, you can't deny it was probably a good dive if you had a scooter. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, if you want to learn anything else about these really awesome pieces of gear, how to use them in your underwater shooting, or if uh, you know you just want to make sure you've got one ready for your next dive trip, you can contact us here at Backscatter, or you can find all the details on backscatter.com. And happy shooting.